Have you ever wondered how a habitat really is done? I mean, which steps are taken and what is important to look at? Well, in today's video, we are going to do exactly this. We are going to go step by step with every unnecessary bit in between to see what really it is like to build a habitat. Now follow me through this video and we're going to start with the first step. So stick with me and let's go. All right, step number one is the planning. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to plan out how the habitat should look like and how it is laid out. Um, one hint, please stick with me till the real time part because I've got a very interesting announcement. So if you want to have something special in the community, you might want to stick with me until the real time part, but more about that later. Also more about this uh, very habitat and its future in the future, well, future in the future, later in this video. But first, let's talk about this. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm planning ahead where the path should be. You will see that the path is going to change during the build process. But first of all, I need to have a very rough idea of where the path need to go. So I do know the proper blueprint of the habitat. What I do next is I'm going to paint the actual layout of the habitat. Um, I'm using the uh, terrain paint to lay out where certain things of the habitat should be. Uh, so I have a very rough idea of where certain things are going, um, which is going to help me by shaping the habitat. So I've got a very nice idea. And that's already all we need for the first portion of the video, because we we will know now exactly where certain areas have to go. Um, that means we can now paint a picture of what we want to do, get some inspiration and move on to the second point, which is the foundation. Now we are going to lay down the foundation and as I said, there are also some unnecessary bits in today's video um, because we went that extra mile, okay? Or maybe two extra miles if you ask me, because all the stuff you are going to see in this part of the video will not be visible at the end at all. Isn't that great? <laughs> so first thing I'm going to do here is um, I'm always using a little uh, item that helps me to understand how deep the water needs to be. So we have the measurement of three meter deep water in order to make the sea lions dive. And exactly this is what you need to consider when you're doing this very thing. You need to consider that you want to have three meter deep water and always keep in a little bit of a buffer because, you know, the game is nasty and sometimes the animals won't dive. Uh, that means um, you have to keep an eye on the distance between certain uh, areas and especially uh, between the water surface and the lowest point of your habitat because you still want to make it somewhat realistic. Um, by the way, this is also the reason why I spread out the habitat a little bit. But more about the design decisions of this habitat uh, later because I planned this habitat ahead so more about all the design decisions will be talked about in the last part of the speed build because this is where I can give you the most inspiration and the most ideas to how I exactly came up with certain ideas because this very thing over here is preparation. So you can see these wooden things I'm placing down right now are nothing else than um, concrete cardboard thingies or like uh, basically these things are... Uh, yeah, some covers and stuff in which you can fill in the concrete in order to make sure you have the big tank. These are nothing else than um, just basically blueprints where you can fill in stuff and they will be completely removed later on. It's just to hold the concrete in place before it's uh, going to start being hardened. Um, what we already do, we already fill in some uh, you know, concrete to the ground level. This is something I imagine would have been done then. So first of all, put all the uh, blueprints in place and then they would have filled in all the concrete. I mean, I could have gone even a three mil a mile forward and put a, you know, concrete mixer in here as a car because we have some in the workshop. But honestly, um, that's something for a different video uh, because then I have to get even more creative and even more realistic. And in fact, I've done that the very thing with the camel stories. If you don't know what the camel stories are, just go to my channel, search for camel stories and you're going to find a video which potentially was the most insane video I've ever done. I think this was the longest ever time preparation time I ever had for the shortest video I have ever done. Um, so the amount of time going in per each second uh, was definitely definitely not reasonable but it still was a lot of fun. Now moving on to the next bit is the underground view. So we had to plan ahead where the underground view goes and as you guys know the pathing path in this game is not necessarily the easiest thing and the most um, inviting thing to do. 
Um, truth to be told, I obviously used uh, the free build mod here to get something done. But to be fair, you could have achieved this layout also without it. Um, so I made sure that this is somewhat realistic. Um, there's not going to be a blueprint of this available after the episode. It's going to be available sooner than later. I'm going to upload this park so you can grab yourself what you need. The reason why I'm doing this is um, it, it's merely impossible to get you guys um, a blueprint of this thing where you can put in the path. Uh, it's just just not possible simply because I built this so intricate and so detailed um, I tried placing it down just one more time afterwards and it's just even for me with free build it was nearly impossible to put the path in the right position um, really really hope that Frontier is going to bring us the feature of copying or like blue blueprinting the uh, path at some point I know that they have been thinking about this in the past I know that this has been um, a major concern in the community and I know this is also a major wish in the community to really have the ability to copy and paste pathing because still this is one of the most annoying thing especially when you're using uh yeah just elements from the workshop and uh, it's not only that it's only a, a problem when you have one simple habitat but it's becoming more of a problem the more complicated it is uh and the more outdated also the blueprint is because with all the updates frontier change a couple of things and so certain placements are not valid anymore and blah um moving on to the next bit you will never see again uh, is the concrete footers because we will have something in position later on and so we need some footers because on um, onto these footers there's going to be a bit of a steel mesh which is going to be in place to hold down the fiberglass material uh from which the fake rocks are made um so most of the zoos, if not all zoos worldwide, nowadays use fake rocks. This has several reasons to why. It starts with the material, it's lighter and more cheaper, but also to avoid certain materials um, getting created on top of these, because obviously with real stones you would have more kind of moss and algae creation uh, or development than it would be with these fake ones. Um, and there are like a million, uh, yeah, a million reasons to take these fake rocks but these rocks obviously are not solid they are basically um yeah, having a zero content so to say they are open and whole in the middle and so they need to be on something and this is the structure we made here so moving on to the preparations which is step number three after we've done all the foundation work and all the necessary work now it's time to do the stuff that really is visible at the end. So what we're doing over here, we are filling in the concrete, so to say, uh, in the very areas it has to go into. I'm skipping forward a little bit because obviously it's a bit, you know, annoying to see every click by click. That was already pretty nasty in the live stream, but uh, here we are, um, almost done with it. And then I made this kind of a little move, move it down into it so it looks almost like as if the concrete is filled in. I really like this effect. You've seen that at the beginning of the video. If not, skip back. You can see it at the first 20 seconds of the video. And then I started, you know, cleaning off some areas, just putting in a couple of, uh, you know, real elements here and there, just really making sure it looks good and looks decent, it, it has a certain appeal to it, um, and it just doesn't look so... Um, yeah, rough anymore. I think rough is the right point or like um, improvised might also be the other word. But uh, yeah, well, we are going on putting a couple of things in here in this viewing area. We will have several viewing areas around this very habitat. Uh, the reason for that is so maybe we can talk about the first major design des uh, design <laughs> design decision I took here. Um, that the layout of the pool, granted, some of you guys saw different things in the layout. Uh, I'm not going to mention which things because then we might get demonetized, but you guys saw certain form factors, which I never intended to do. The real reason behind this weird form factor was I wanted to create a rather spread out and wide pool that stretches across the pathway, giving it even more of a wider and bigger appearance, almost as if it's like a big lake, um, and still making it rather narrow in the center to give the whole thing um, an appearance of being big but then again uh, shallow at the same time uh, simply because the three meters of depth are looking rather stupid the smaller the habitat is but if you make the pool bigger and wider the three meters relative to its overall size um, don't don't seem that deep anymore and the whole thing looks a lot better and also to give the animals just a lot more space to roam around and dive around you will see in the real-time part um, without spoiling too much that it looks fantastic it might even be the best diving animation overall quality I've seen so far in Planet Zoo at least in my projects simply because the habitat 
works perfectly with the idea how Frontier coded the diving. I really looked at how they behave in deep water and so I planned this habitat in a way that they can benefit from how the animations are played, how the game requires the water volume to be in order to make sure it looks natural. And so I did exactly this because the pathfinding from point A to B in diving requires quite a huge space. But the, the fun bit is the turns, like turning around underwater is really narrow. So they can really do some insanely sharp turns. But in terms of uh, going up and down, they require quite a long path between uh, let's say the, the the beginning point of the animation and the end point of the animation. So this is also all these reasons combined um, You know led me to to make the design the way it is right now then obviously what we do over here before we seal off the uh, little pun intended over here uh, the ceiling of this uh, well, that wasn't intended, but it's cool anyways uh, the ceiling of this underground view because I wanted to make it look almost like as if this is um, completely underground with uh, like kind of you know, grass and stuff like that. Um, I know we have the grass piece but I decided against the grass piece. I wanted to have it look overground right at the first minute so uh, I decided to go with these more like tropical plants but that's about all the preparations. Let's move on to the next one which is the work. Now in step three we do the major work and the first thing that we do is uh, we deliver our rocks and four rocks, right? They're be being deliver delivered. These things are not like, as I said, not solid rock pieces. Um, this is just like a case, right? This would be just like a very, even you could even with two people maybe kind of lift these rocks or something because they're pretty light. There's just some air in it uh, and then you sculpt these, like you cover your mesh that you've created at the beginning um, with these rock pieces and then it would be filled in with some um, other material to make it, you know, just hold, I guess, some kind of glue stuff. I'm not sure what exactly that is. I know it's kind of glue foam kind of thing to make sure that the stone is adjusted to the mesh that you've done before, but yeah. So next bit, um, before we go into doing the rock stuff, um, is putting down some actual footers over here, some some nicely covered up some uh, that uh, hold our first little roofing over here. I decided to make this backstage pool still open. I just have some rooms uh, roofs to the outside where um, the keepers would move along. So if it's raining, the keepers at least can move around there without being soaked completely. Um, I mean, it depends a little bit on what kind of job you have. If you are in there to swim with them or feed them or not, obviously it doesn't even matter if it's raining or not because you get, you're getting soaked anyways. But if you're just in there to, you know, observe the animals or just clean certain things up or blah, 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 you might, not, you, you know, you might not want to be soaked in rain or whatnot. So that's the, the sole reason. Um, We've got a little, almost like theater-esque uh, presentation stage over here, um, which I put a lot of moss on, just making that look a bit more nicely, and then filling in some rocks to make it a bit more organic. We have a bit of a rock in the center. You are going to see later on to why that is. Um, and this is now the part where the habitat gets its character because of all the rocks and stuff. I mix them with uh, some actual rocks, but they would be four rocks in real life anyways. But um, I just wanted to get a bit of a different texture in. That's the sole reason why I'm using those. I don't know why, but I feel like if you're using the um, four rocks like so much, at a certain point, it kind of is too obvious that this is all the four rocks and I just love to blend in some actual rocks and just pretend that would be a different texture of four rocks because in reality those 3D artists they're getting madly skilled at doing uh, four rocks that you can't really tell apart from real ones. They even go so far that the texture is becoming um, like the haptical texture on these things is becoming so good that you can't even notice until you knock on them or you would push against them then you can definitely notice that these are not real rocks but other than that they are getting madly skilled at this so really really crazy how good this thing looks um, this is the most annoying part in real life but it's super satisfying in the time lapse because this is getting uh, sure that or making sure that the uh, pathway looks um, very nice and as if this was all made as one coherent system uh, because with all the pathing and the curbing and stuff like that things just look a little bit ugly um, and I needed to cover that all up but you can see here with this little skip forward it looks 
look super good once we have uh, filled in all the plans and filled in all the details. Um, it really feels like one entire coherent area um, and you can't tell that there are bridges involved. You, you just have the pathway leading down into the cave, but it doesn't feel like as if you're crossing a bridge. It's just one area, you know, and that's exactly the target I was aiming at. And uh, I'm very happy to say that I achieved exactly this. Um, I wasn't too certain that I will, but I, I did eventually, which is great. I mean, if you disagree, tell me in the comments, but for the moment, uh, that's that. Also, just a little reminder, if you made it to this point in the video, first of all, thumbs up. You're great because you didn't skip or you did skip to this point. If you skipped to this point, I see you. I see you skipping to this point. Saw you, okay? Just clicked here and now you're here. Busted. Busted. Okay, never mind. Uh, we are putting down a couple more rocks here to cover up all the ugly edges and just making sure everything looks a bit more coherent. Again, there are some things I will need to do in the future. It's not all perfect. You will see in the real-time part, but they are just like kind of minor little things. I think the overall design and stuff is kind of transported and you can't even imagine how much I did cut out from the video. Like there's more than half of the material is cut out because it was just too much. Because now we are already getting into the finishing touches. So the last step of every Habitat build is obviously the finishing touches. Now, as everything is in place, you will then move on uh, to bring in the last things. And this would be something that is the last thing to be delivered. And that is a huge kind of uh, shade roofing area above the main center of the habitat. My idea was that this could be uh, one of the two presentation areas where the, the keepers could show some feeding, could explain something about the sea lions and just go there and do some things. Um, not a show. Uh, intentionally, it's not a show, it's educational content for whatever that is. It, it could be feeding, it could be giving them some toys to play, um, it could be giving them a riddle or something to solve, but not like a show kind of thing, but actually giving them uh, some proper enrichment. Uh, and therefore, I decided to put like a very modern-esque kind of simple roof on top here, which has like a waveform to you know, go in line with like water and stuff, just very subtle branding of water. It's nothing major, but just making sure we have something and then putting that on top and giving it a bit of a broken up look uh, by just, you know, getting some of the edges in. It's not perfectly fine looking, but this was intentionally. I think it fits very well with the uh, organic shapes. And then we have like kind of a hard thing over here, which is only hard in, in terms of the edges. But uh, once you look from the side, you have some very soft lines following this waveform. So playing a little bit with um, hard edges and soft form factors to make this modern looking roof. I just adjusted a couple of things I wasn't happy with. And later on, uh, I'm very happy with how it turned out at the end. So in just in general, I am madly happy with how the habitat turned out to be looking at the very end. It's exactly what I envisioned. Um, it might have been a little bit harder in between when I didn't, you know, I didn't see it uh, all coming together nicely. But at the end, I'm very happy with how it turned on, uh, turned out. This is the point where I hand you over to the real-time Rudy. So let's go into the soft opening. Hello and welcome to the real-time part. As promised, the first thing we're going to do is uh, reveal the little secret I was promising you. So if you guys are in my Discord channel and you commented under this video, there is a good chance that one of you is going to get the wonderful new role called Sea Lion. Yes, because with every new animal we are adding to any of my projects, one of you guys is going to get the role of the very animal we are adding when you actually commented on the video. That's all you have to do. Easy as that. Um, so yeah, we are in the real-time part. As you can see, this is the finished habitat. Well, as I said in the speed build, not quite finished, but for the moment being, it's exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, so that's that. We are going to go rather quickly over it because there is a couple of things to see. Now you can see there are a couple of planters over here. I left it very open. Um, there are some ceilings, like some fences missing over here. People could easily crash down here. That's not too secure, but most of that is done. Um, it's very hard to get over here. Why can I not take the bridge? I'm gonna go next to it. Um, so yeah, and then we have got this little area over here where you have the education right in front of that wonderful shade. You can even look into the very background where they just chill. Um, then you've got the stands in, in the front where we have something where they can actually, if they want to, uh, do some tricks and stuff in their little island. We have the area where the educators are and can talk to you guys and just, you know, give you a bit of a presentation. Um, then we've got something where they can run over here and we've got the other educational area down there, uh, which is the idea that uh, you can actually 
move over here with your tour. Uh, same thing applies over here. Not sure why we can't take that bridge. Um, go all the way around here into this neat little area. And then once we are in here, we can just take a seat. And then we will have this wonderful view where you can see the animals go up from here, down here, do a little dive and just do some cool things in this very spot. I'm really, really pleased with the result. A couple of little things to clean up are still, you know, um, you know, we have to still do that. But uh, this is something I'm going to do. Uh, once I clean the whole thing up anyways, because otherwise that would have taken too long. And just to show you everything, we are just going to take the route down. Can I just go here through the middle? Oh, that actually works. Look at that. Perfection. Um, we're going to take our little route down into uh, the underground view. Let's go down here. Again, we need to clean up certain things, but I did do the interior as you can see, and now we can really see them diving here in the underwater view, which is really cool. Look at that. This is so cool how they just subtly dive underwater. Um, Frontier did patch a couple of things, which I am a big fan of. The diving looks a lot better, a lot more natural. Not sure what exactly they fixed. Um, Ooh, that is a very interesting fix here. Uh, how to get up here? Well, anyways, we're just gonna cheat our way in here and just have a look how they dive. Look at that. Looks really cool. Like the way how they transition between uh, being um, underwater and diving and also above water is just very nice. This special animation over here is brand new. Um, I double checked and this is, it makes it feel a lot more organic. Um, so that they just suddenly go underwater and be up again. Really cool, really cool stuff. I'm not sure why we're not down there again anymore. Oh, look at that, we are down there. Look, I have all the tricks. Um, so yeah, really cool. I think it looks really fair, really good. Um, not sure what exactly is happening over here, but okay. Um, look at the diving, it really looks good. Really am a big fan of it. Also with uh, all the, you know, stones and stuff they still do dive quite a lot which was the intention but yeah let's move out and have a little conclusion